Hey guys, we're going to start this week out by having a little coffee clutch. I want to talk to you for a minute about something that I think will really help you. And then from there, we're going to proceed to making some really neat polymer clay charms, which we talked a little bit in one of my last videos right before this, but I found some new techniques and had some folks write in to share some this week, so I thought, let's take it another step further. But before we talk about that, I want to talk to you, <clears throat> excuse me, about the value of your work. Now, it's no secret to anybody out there who is pursuing their dream of making a living at jewelry making or craft that is a little harder right now than it was maybe a few years ago. Um, there are a lot of people giving it a try and that's great. We love to see that. Um, but more than that, it's just that, you know, things have gotten expensive and people maybe are hanging on to their money a little bit more and not buying as much. So, many people have thought, well, <coughs> excuse me, uh, maybe I'm selling my work for too much money. And it always bears taking a little bit of time to analyze your price as compared to your competition. You know, how, how do I measure up? I do that with our goods. I try to come under or at least have better quality for a competitive price if I can or offer you some other perk to help you out um, we have to help one another out in, in, when money's tight but uh, maybe you have overpriced your work so look at that but more likely as not you've underpriced it uh, especially a lot of uh, new jewelry makers do that because they're so thrilled with the sale that they take a pair of earrings like this that have all this stuff hanging off of them. I don't know if you can see it. I just made these the other week. These are those easy peasy earrings I was talking about at the creative group. It's got kind of an expensive uh, fan shape in the green patina. It's got a leaf. It's got a key. It's got a handmade ear wire, which I made out of bronze wire or brass ox wire, I should say. And some beads and stuff. Didn't take me a whole long time to make it. So you could, um, <coughs> excuse me, say, well, you know, I don't have tons of money into the parts. I'll sell them for ten bucks. There's times I've done that, too. Just because it didn't take you very long to make them, you did have to train yourself to make jewelry, okay? Maybe you attended classes. Maybe you had a lot of um, stop-start you know, failures along the way that you learned from. That's all worth money. What you know is worth money. Don't sell yourself short. A pair of earrings like this should be priced depending on your market. I would say at practical retail between $18 to $25. At least. Now if they don't go after a while, then maybe you put them on sale. But you made the ear wires. You had to learn how to do that. You had to find your source of supply. If it's me, thank you. <laughs> if not, you still had to find it, okay? Um, that sometimes takes time. If you used quality findings, and I hope you did, they weren't cheap, especially if you used an American-made brass. No, it's not cheap like some imported product is. But maybe that takes some reevaluation too. Go back and look at your line and say, you know, could I do a little bit less is more? Or is my stuff too over the top? Is it too fussy? I have to do that because I tend to want to go over the top. If you look at this necklace I'm wearing, there should have been two necklaces probably, but I've got it all hooked into one because I like it that way. But, you know, to be honest, I might have done better if I'd taken this apart and sold it as two, and then if somebody wanted both of them, you know, they could have bought both or, or not, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, that's what I need to do, even though I get my stuff, you know, wholesale, um, you know, I need to think about it too. Sometimes less is more. Someone in my community that's doing a really good job with that is Robin from Lulu's Box at Etsy. If you want to look at her store, it's Lulu's Box at Etsy. Robin, I'm not real sure how to say your last name. It's D-E-L-A-R-G-Y. Robin takes a few components and makes them really, really, really elegant with a little bit of work and some good wire wrapping and some really great photography. You might want to check her stuff out at Bisa Boutique's Creative Group 
and she has a good handle on make something, on making something look very rich and expensive, and not having a ton of really, really expensive parts in it. And there are others who do it too. One who comes to mind um, is um, Kimberly Turner. She goes by Dr. Brassy Steaming. She does a good job of that as well. My friend Margot Horowitz, we haven't heard from for a while, but uh, her steampunk jewelry is like that too. Um, so you might want to go back and look at some of the design galleries on my page. Um, check it out. See what you think. Send your comments to me. Not here at YouTube because it doesn't. Res I can't do a response from YouTube. Do it. Come to Facebook to Brenda Sue Lansdowne. Come to the creative group at Flickr, Visa Boutique's creative group. Come to my website and comment. Whatever. Find me that way. No, don't do it here because I, I can't get back to you here. But anyway, enough of that yak. Think about the value of your work. It's worth something. Your work is worth something. Don't give it all away. Be fair with your prices. Be competitive. But don't give it all away just because times are tight. You're worth more than that. Okay, let's talk about polymer clay. And I'll put my coffee away because, as you know, we can't have coffee in the workshop. And uh, we'll do some charms today. So here are some polymer clay centerpieces and charms and focals that I made using the method that we talked about last week about the brass stampings being so very versatile. You know, you can go out and buy push molds. You can make push molds too, and that's fun. You can buy texture plates. That's cool. We sell a few. As you can see, I have some sitting around here too. You can find texture in things that you have in your house already. But brass stampings are another place where you can find some incredible Art Nouveau, Art Deco, Retro Flair texture and make focals very, very simply and easily and you should. So, you know, you can make a mold of this and, and use it for your own self. The only thing you can't do with American made stamp is they don't want you to do is say that um, you wanted to make a line for sale in a store. They don't want you like going in, going in big and making a bunch of like say these charms like this to sell using their molds. It's kind of a funky thing. Like you can use this thing to make jewelry all day long however you want but they they get a little bit funky about you. Like they would never want you to take and rubber mold this and make it in metal or pewter. You could get in trouble for that because it's they on the die. Sometime I'll talk about it on my uh, blog and explain it a little bit further. But for polymer clay and for your personal use and for to sell some things in your shop or your Etsy or eBay or whatever, you know, here and there, it's okay. Go for it. I hope you will. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about doing it. The ones that came out really cool here are these hearts. I just love these. And as you see, I have stuck a wire bail in them, just like you would do if they were ceramic. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And all these two, these are so cute, these little things. Where is that piece? We have all these pieces at the website, and Shelly is putting them up, I believe, today. I hope. <laughs> and putting them in the polymer clay section so that you can see which of these stampings are good for using for push molds and stuff. Um, I have one here that's up here. So if like, you put some green glass leaves with that, wouldn't that be cool? You know? But anyway. Um, okay, so how I did it. Simple. I have a ball of clay here that I've already conditioned and gotten ready. About this size. You can say, wow, Brenda, that's a huge hunk of clay. You sure you need that much? Well, you kind of sort of do. And I'm going to show you why. Here's my heart stamping. As you can see, it's got quite a nice little recess in it. Okay, so now I'm going to take it, I'm going to position it over this lump of clay that I have conditioned, and I'm going to press very hard with the palm of my hand. I'm going to like stand on it, okay? Partly because this clay has been sitting here for a little bit and isn't quite as soft. Okay. Now, you can use something like this for a release in your molds. Someone suggested this week that she bakes it for five minutes and then pops it out and then finishes baking. You know, whatever works for you is good, but this is going to be okay. But I'm going to show you a little bit about that too. Okay, now I'm going to pull this away. And I've got a really nice impression. So now I need to cut that out. How am I going to do it? Well, I could have left this in, but I didn't. But I'm just going to go around here and pull away. This isn't coming real good. I should have left it on. 
You know what? I'll do one like that too. How about that? Let me take the tissue blade and do it. This is one way you could do it too. Although I think you're going to have a little bit more cleanup. You know, have you ever noticed that I tend to teach by trial and error? And then I tend to show you a lot of things not to do? But you know what? That's not a bad way to teach, really. <laughs> you know, teaching the right way first is good, but showing you what you're going to have to deal with if you don't do it the right way is not, not terrible. I'll go with that. Many of you have commented that, you know, you don't mind that I sometimes go the wrong way because, um, you know, I always tell you, too, we're all learning. And I have not done a ton of this as well, you might be able to see, but I have had success. I got proof right here. And you will too. But the reason I like to make these so thick, now there's some cleanup with this because I didn't leave it on. It's kind of rough. You know. But you can you can do this with just pressure of your fingers. You don't want to push down on the top of it much though. This one's kind of fat. This one's a kind of a little bit too fat. But the better to show you how to put the bale in. That's the main point thing. You guys are going to experiment and you're going to find all kinds of great ways to use these molds. This could be cut down too with the tissue blade by just slicing through like this. But I'm a little afraid to do it on camera. I know I can do it. But if I mangle this all up then we got to start all over again. And I want to do another video yet. And Rob says he's got places to go tonight, so he doesn't want me keeping him here all day and all night shooting videos. Isn't that right, Rob? Yep. Yeah, yeah, he's a young man. He's got places to go. And that Brenda only gets just so much of his time. But I'm good with that. Kind of looks like a little chocolate out of a box, doesn't it? I'm liking that. Okay, but you just you smooth this down, or you can sand it later if you want with your fingers. Yeah. If we weren't on camera, I would definitely take the tissue blade and I would cut it down. But here's what I want to show you. This is the big point. I'm using 18-gauge um, wire. And I'm going to cut it off about hmm, there. Probably I should have done a little more. But anyway, these are bale-making pliers. If you don't have a pair, you need them. Period. The end. Put, this, put it in between the two loops and bend up. We have bell making pliers at the site. If you want to buy ours, that would be very cool. If not, all I can say is just get some. Wherever you get them, get them. But see, that makes a nice little thing. And you know what we're going to do with this, right? It's going in here. Now, positioning this correctly is important because if you don't get this in just right in the middle, nice, it will affect the way your charm hangs. And you're not going to be happy. So get it in there nice and centered. And push it down in good because you don't want it popping out. You know, you can check it. When it comes out of the oven, check it really good because, you know, you want to see if it's loose. If it is, you could take it out and put a little bit of liquid sculpey on the end and stick it back in and bake it for another five minutes. It might be good. Okay. So we're not going to get into all the foibles and whatnots of this. I'm just basically presenting an idea to you. Here's the next idea, even though this really is fat. But then, so am I. <laughs> I have Ranger Perfect Pearls here. And what they are, they're like a powdered mica resin. If you haven't worked with them before, I think we do have them at the site. I know we used to. Pearlex will use them to will work too. Some people use old eyeshadow, but they don't old eyeshadow does not have the resin binder that this product does, and it's not a real expensive product. So I would suggest that you get yourself some Ranger Perfect Pearls. And these are the metallics. This is the silver pearl, this is a gold, this is a copper, and this is kind of a bronze. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of the gold because I think it might show up best. And I don't want to get too much on there. If you've ever used Bare Essentials um, makeup, you know how you don't want to get too much on your brush. And you kind of swirl it. Tap it. And swirl it. <laughs> but see, look at now. What's happening. Isn't that lovely? And I might want to get that really good on my big fat sides. Of course, I am spreading it around all over, so it's going to get on other things. But I like this color, so I'm not real worried about it right now. But if you are, you're going to want to do it on something else so you can remove it so it doesn't contaminate your other things. Anyway, this is ready to bake now. 
and that will bake right into it and it will come out with this lovely sheen so that you may decide you don't even want to put a glaze or a coat on it because it may not look like it even needs it. Okay, so that's how I did that. And I'm going to put that, I'm going to put it here so you can look at it. But um, I have to remember that I'm going to bake it. These here are all baked. This one I made from this by pushing it down into a flattened piece. This one I made from this piece, which we have on the site push down a flattened piece and I took a, a roll and went around and texturized and put little holes and dots and then put my mica on. I have a really nice pendant now with that. You can see the back. Okay. Um, this one came from this piece of green brass that I had. And I made a really pretty centerpiece. Now once again, this could have borne a little bit. It's okay, Rob. This could have borne a little bit of um, sanding on the edges. Okay. But basically, that's how you do it. I'm going to do one more real quick. Rob is tapping me because he's afraid we're going to run out of time. We don't want to do that. But I want you to see one more. Let's see, what can I do? This one I'm going to do. This is a little bit of piece. Of, it's got some other stuff. It was scrap clay. I don't know if we have enough room here to. You know what? I'm going to do this piece with it. You have to have enough room to get your piece up. Okay. Sometimes I even take and roll it a little bit to really get it down in there. Okay, now I'm going to do it this way without popping it out first. I'm going to take my stylus thing, pull this off, take this here, pull this off. Now as you see, you're going to have some cleanup. If you guys have a better way of doing it, go ahead and say something, you know. You can comment or tell me privately or however, you know, because we're all learning. I have made this work, but there is some cleanup with it. And once again, this will come out just fine out of the mold. Now, people who are very fussy polymer clay artists, they would probably be appalled. But you know, polymer clay is not like that anymore. Polymer, polymer clay is for everybody. And I say, embrace the imperfection. You might find something new. If you're all worried about perfect, there's only a few things. You don't want a contaminated surface. You don't want your nails too long because you don't want nail marks in it. Fingerprints don't bother me, so long as it doesn't interfere with the design. Okay, now I'm going to lift this out of here. Look at that. Isn't that cute? That's so cute. Now, it's just fat enough I could take and get my wire, like I just made this one, and put a wire bale in there, and then I would have a charm, just like these, which are finished, and they have Ranger glossy accents over the top of them. They're a little bit fatter, though. Anyway, you play with it. See what happens. Let me know what you think. And we're going to move along to the next video. But I hope you had fun with this. And you can see the broad range of brass stampings that you can use to make molds. You can take put a little bit of this Son of a Gun STP, which you can get at the dollar store. Put it on a swab and run it up inside here. Or put a little bit over top of the clay before you push it down. And that will make a nice release for you too if you want to go that route. So have fun and let me know how it goes.